Hey guys, it's May May and it's time for our final Push the Envelope Challenge with me and Gareth from G's Creations. It's kind of sad that it's our final one, but don't worry, we're going to do some other challenges with other things, but we'll be through with the Envelope Punch Board for a while. And I'm going to say this, I'm sad to stop, but then again, I'm not sad because I think my brain has done all I can do right now with this thing. <laughs> Although I had some other ideas and I may use them later, but my brain is pushed on this guy so we've accomplished the pushing the envelope so today we're going to do something that i came up with kind of um last minute because i actually was working on something totally different let me move the punch board out of the way and i got to get it way out of the way because i gotta have room i was actually thinking of something completely different than this and this came to me now this was inspired by i don't know if you've ever seen them but they're called squash books if you've never seen one if you're interested in seeing one done i can do a tutorial for you so here we go you untie it and it was so funny I just showed this to Vince and he was like oh because it just keeps going so we've got this side here it's gonna be very hard to show in my camera but it's three envelopes wide okay and then these open like this see that and then I want to move this down and show you that this flap opens and this flap open so you can see the whole thing but there you go so it's a little mini album not little this one's huge this one's made with the largest envelopes the largest one and then two smaller ones which i'll show you how to do that but this is what we're going to create and what i think is so cool about this is this is something that technically if you didn't mind paying extra postage you could mail this if you sealed it up like an envelope you know i don't know that i would do it that way but you you could if you sealed this guy up and sent it to somebody. I know my post office would help me with that. So um, you may end up having to put it in another envelope. But either way. So I'm going to tie this back so it doesn't explode open. Because it's basically an exploding envelope mini album. Alright. So well, let's make one. For the big um, exploding envelope I did. I went right over here and went to the biggest paper. Which was 11 and a half by 11 and a half. And your, your envelope is punched and scored at 4 and 7 eighths. Okay. Then, that was for the centerpiece. Then the two sides had to be a little bit smaller so that it could all fold up. So I just went up one, and that gave me the smaller envelope, half an inch smaller, so that when everything folded in on itself, it would still fit. So let's look at these sizes here and see what I can get out of this 12 by 12 piece of paper. That'll be fun. For the purpose of the video, so I know that it'll fit in the camera, I'm gonna do the A2 size, and that way you'll be able to see everything I'm doing. And if you look right here, um, we know we need an eighth and one eighth by eight and one eighth piece of paper for the A2 size envelope. And then I'm going to go up one and get the seven and three fourths by seven and three fourths. Now, when you're doing this, pay really close attention to the two sizes. You might be in a breaking point between the sizes, and you want them to be about a quarter to half an inch apart in the envelope size. So just make sure you're not getting something that jumps. For example, this is a six by six piece of paper, but when we go right above it, it goes to nine and a quarter by nine and a quarter. You don't want to try to put these two together, but you could do the six and a half and the six by six. I hope that makes sense. So you want to do one size and then one size underneath it. Now, because I did that last one in really bright colors, I think I'll do the next one in these more muted colors, which I think are just beautiful colors. And this paper pad was sent to me. I really appreciate it. I think this is gorgeous. And the cool thing is this is not something I would have bought for myself, so I really love it. And I'm going to use some solid brown paper for the envelopes itself. So... Let's get started. One thing I do like to do with this is use paper pads because then I know all the paper I'm going to use is going to match and I don't have to kind of dig around for papers to match. Although you can do that. If you have some papers you're wanting to use up, as long as they match, you'll be fine. But I like to just use a paper pad. All right, so the first one we need is eight and one eighth. This will be our center envelope by eight and one eighth. Okay, so there's one. Then the la the next two we need are just slightly smaller than that. These are seven and three fourths by seven and three fourths. And this really is not that big. It doesn't have to be exact by no means because the way we put this together, these are going to be on the inside. So them being a little bit smaller is actually a good thing. Now it is time for the punch board. All right, so it doesn't matter which one you start with. You just want to know which size you've got. I'm going to start with the larger one, which is the 8 and 1 eighth. That is the A2 size card, so I need to punch and score at 3 and 3 quarters. So I'll start here. Let me get my scoring tool out real quick. So 3 and 3 fourths, punch and score. And then all you have to do then is line your little pointer up with your score line, punch and score. 
punch and score. Punch and score. So this will be our middle of our book. So this will be a lot easier to see on camera. And then on this one, we're just going to go to that size above it right here at 7 and 3 fourths by 7 and 3 fourths. And we're going to punch it at 3 and 3 quarters just like the last one. So 3 and 3 quarters, punch and score. Punch and score. Punch. Score. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and do um, the other envelope just like this one and we'll get right back together. Now I did not do this on my last one but I do think I want to do it on this one. Before you put this away, go ahead and punch these top pieces. I would just go ahead and punch all four of them and that way you know they're all punched no matter where they end up, whether, they'll, whether they show or not. Because two of these flat, these smaller flats won't show. But it can't hurt to go ahead and punch them all. That way you know they're right. So now we're going to put this guy away. I'm going to keep my score, um, my bone folder out because I'm going to keep using it. Alright, now we're just going to score these guys. I always say that. We're going to just burnish these guys. <laughs> and I'm not worried about getting them super, super creased right now. Because, actually, they don't have to be super, super creased. Because you really just need them to go about like that. We're not trying to get them to lay flat or take any bulk out. Okay, so now we're going to assemble them together. Now, the first time I made this, my plan was to take these two and stick them together like this. So that you would end up with a flap here in this area too. But I did not like it. I made it that way and I didn't like the way this flap looked out of place. So I ended up gluing this flap to the back side of this and gluing that one to the inside of that. And that way when we mat, they kind of just go away. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm gonna use my favorite tape because this is a mini album. And if you wanna give this away, you wanna make sure you got plenty of sticky so it does not come apart. All right, so I've released the backer on that. And all I'm gonna do here is line this envelope, and you might even wanna flip it over so you can see exactly what you're doing. You're just gonna line these two up together just like that, leaving your kind of kind of evening out that top and bottom section. See the distance between them? Just about like that. And stick that down. Okay, don't worry about this flat. We'll get to that one in a second. Let's go ahead and do this one. Okay, so now what you want to do is you want to line this side up and do the same thing. This flap's going to be on the inside. And you know what I did? The first time I put this down, which was just a second ago, I did not line this up right. I put the wrong piece on the outside, so I had to take this off and redo it. And so I ripped this a little bit, but that's going to be covered up. I'm not going to stress about it. All right, now these guys need to get glued down into place. And I'm going to put some um, paper over this to really hold it down anyway, so I'm just going to put a little bit of adhesive on it, adhesive on there for us, just to hold it in place until we start matting, because the mats will hold it down. Now we can just seal that down and then seal this one down. Okay. Now then what I want to do, I feel like I'm going to have to do some adjusting on these upper flaps. So I'm going to fold these like I want them to. I like to fold these sides in, the bottom up, and this down just like it was an envelope. So the side in, the bottom up, and the top down. Okay. Then it doesn't matter which one you turn in. Just turn one of them in like so. Then turn the other one in, just like that. Now this is where I think we're going to have to do some adjustment on the flap, okay? I feel like it's not going to close perfectly, but that is really not a problem. All you're going to do is lift this up and kind of work it into place, and then fold it down over, and then you can crease it. And now you know right where your flap's supposed to be. Let's do this side. Now like I said, I haven't done any other side of this, so if you start doing these, you may have to just decide, you know, you may have to do a lot more of this, but you want to make sure that whatever you do, they're pretty much the same. So basically they're scored and punched on the same number. All right, so now we are all together and we can close. Now it is time to do the matting. Now what I did was I just measured inside my envelope. This one is, I'm gonna go right inside. This one is four and three quarters, and then five and three quarters. So the mat piece I'm gonna cut for here is gonna be four and a half by five and a half. And I'm gonna cut one for this side and one for the reverse side. So I'm gonna do that real quick. 
So I've cut these two pieces four and a half by five and a half, and I'm using my favorite corner punch. Let me find it. This guy. I love the angle and the photo. In this one, I think I'm going to use, like I did on the other one, the photo punch. So it looks like this. Let me show you if you can see that. It has a little point to it here on the end. It's really cool. So I'm going to use that all the way around. You can do anything you want. You can corner around these. You can leave them like they are. You can ink it. You can put holes in it. You can do anything you want to do. You can use a border punch. That would be super cute. I just think this makes them look good and fancy without too much work. Okay, so these are ready to have adhesive put on the back. Okay, so I've already gone, I've gone ahead and taken the um, sticky, the backer off of our adhesive. And this one, do you see it's got the shine to it, this paper does? That one's going to go on the front. So I'm going to flip this guy over. And that butterfly is so pretty. Look how pretty this is in brown. Haven't done a lot of brown lately. But I like it. So I'm just going to put that one there. And now this butterfly has set the pace. This is now up and down, so I've got to pay attention to that butterfly. Flip this over and put this page in the middle. And see how it's going to cover those up right there? It's just going to cover that up perfectly. Isn't that cool? Okay, now then we're going to do this mat and this mat, but we're going to cut all of them at the same time. So you're just going to measure one, once and then cut all of them. So this one is four and three quarters, just like this one, by five. So this we're going to cut at four and a half by four and three fourths, okay? And I'm going to cut four different pages, and then we'll get back together and put them together. Okay, so in true assembly line fashion, I went ahead and cut four pieces, okay, just like this. I angled that corner, just like I've been doing, and I went ahead and put the sticky on the back and took the backer off. So we are ready to start putting them into place. And this does not have an up or down. So I'm going to stick that piece in, just like that. I love that. So over here, I'm going to use this one. I think this one's so pretty. So as you can see, I've got those all inserted. Now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to do these two sides. And remember, that's our butterfly that tells us if we're upside down or not. So we need to be upside right here. <laughs> and so I'm going to put this one on. That's probably too much green, but I like that piece with the writing. And then this brown over here. Now then for the fun part. You're probably thinking these edges are going to be too hard to mat, but they're not. They're super easy. I'm going to show you what I discovered. If you take your ruler, okay, and you measure this flap from the top to here where it folds down, okay, I get four inches. I want to show you the trick. All right, so we measured that flap and we got four inches. So we're going to cut a square that is four by four. And I save all of my scraps. I don't know if you've probably heard me say this before, but when you're working on a project, take all these and put them in one basket or one bowl or one drawer. So as you're working on this project, you can pull to those and know you're getting the right colors for your project. Now we're going to turn this on its side. You're going to line it up in your cutting, um, your cutting trimmer, whatever, however how you use your trimmer. If you have one of these little things like I do, the clear thing that lines it up, that's awesome. If not, just line it up on the diagonal and cut this apart. Okay, and you end up with two triangles like this. And let me show you what they do. Now then, I know that they will be the right size for at the top, but do you see how they hang just barely off the edge? I want to show you what we're going to do. You have a couple options. You can use your corner rounder and do the same thing and get a rounded edge, or you can use this punch like I have that has the angle, and you can just sit it down inside there as far down as it'll go. And I want to show you this really carefully, okay? This edge lines up with this edge, nice and straight, and that point is in there, and then you just cut that side, okay? Then we'll do the other side the same way. Line that edge up, make sure you got it right, and then cut that edge off. Now, this fits in here just like this. Now, you may not love how much there is showing right there, so I'll show you with your corner rounder. Take your corner rounder, which this is actually how I ended up doing it. So you take your corner rounder and the quarter of an inch cut, do the exact same thing we just did. Put this in as far down as it'll go, line it up to one side, press, and you get a little rounded corner, and then you bring it to the other side and do the same thing. Just try to line it up in there nice and straight, 
okay? You get two rounded edges, which look like this. And to me, that was the better look. So I did this. So let's do a little recap. You measure from one side to the other, okay? Whatever you get, you make that a square. If you get six inches, you do a six inch square. If you get eight inches, you do an eight inch square, okay? Then you cut that piece of paper out and cut it in half on the diagonal. That gets you the triangle, and then you just use your corner rounder to round out these edges. And then these guys will go in these spots. Let's put this one down, I like it right there. Then when I line it up, I just line it up the top corner up there, the sides here, and this bottom side. The rest will be just fine. So when I line it, I make sure these are laying right and this bottom's laying right, and then that falls into place. So see how we matted that one? So super simple, which means you can do this with pictures too. You know now your mat is this big, so if you measure your mat, it is three and a half now, okay? So you take that three and a half measurement and make a square, and then cut that picture. Just make sure it'll fit in the little triangle so you can put your little picture in there. So now you know how to get these flaps because they're the bigger flaps. Now don't forget this guy's smaller. So let's do this one. We'll do it the same way. We're going to measure this side flap and I get three and a half. Okay, so I want to do a square that's three and a half by three and a half. So there's my three and a half by three and a half and now I'm just going to lay this in my cutting blade and line it up corner to corner and then cut. I end up with two. Don't get rid of this one. You can use it somewhere else because you've got four more. You got or three more. You got to lay down, and then the corner rounder. This may be the most confusing part. It's the quarter of an inch. You're going to put this in until one side lines up with the angle and the other side is straight. Okay. So you don't want to go too far. You want to make sure this line is pretty straight and then round it. Then you want to flip it around this way and do it on the other side so you know that your angles are going in the same direction and you get your corner rounded, and this will go here. So see how perfect that fits? You can round that corner too. I didn't. I like it kind of pointed, but you can round it. All right, I'm going to go through and mat all of those points, and we will get right back together. Okay, so as you can see, I've matted everything. Now, there's one thing I want to caution you about that I forgot about. This envelope and this envelope are slightly different on these flaps, so you want to make sure you measure this one and this one separately, and then do your matting. Because remember, this was eight and one eighth by um, square, and this was seven and three quarters square. So this is a little bit different. So save yourself some aggravation and go ahead and, and uh, measure the, this middle one by itself and do the flaps, and then measure this by itself and do the flaps. Okay, now let's flip it over. Okay, so it's time to do the closure on the front. And if you remember on my original one, or the first one I did, I used a ribbon. If you want to use a ribbon closure, just when you put this mat on, make sure you put the ribbon behind it. That mat is this mat right here. So the very first one we put on, you put your ribbon behind it hanging out. But this time, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to use these brads and make a different kind of closure. I just think it'll be cute. So I'm going to get two of these out. They're really cute, thick brads. Okay, like that. Okay, I took my one and one quarter inch circle punch and I punched two circles out, which we're going to use to help secure our brads, just to help reinforce them. And what I'm going to do with these, let's sit this one there for a minute, is I'm going to adhere these down in this area like so. Okay. And I'm definitely using my sticky tape here because I want this to be very strong and sturdy. Now I'm just going to take this one, and you can see where I'm at over here, okay? And I'm going to center it in the bottom corner of that point. So that kind of gives me a double thickness there. And I'm going to take my crocodile with the smaller hole and just come to the center of that. You may have to go a different way to get there, like to the side like this, but you just want the center. I'm going to punch that in and then put one of these brads in. Now, I'm not going to squish it down extremely hard. I'm going to close it, but I'm not going to squish it really hard because I want it to have a little bit of movement because we're going to put some twine around it. All right, so this one's ready to be stuck down. So I'm going to use my sticky tape again. Okay, so this one's ready to be stuck down. So I'm just going to put it here in this area and stick that down. So you see, when I did that kind of loose, and I'll show you up close, when I put this one on kind of loose, it gave me a little bit of lift, and that's what we wanted, just a little bit. Okay, and now I'm going to put this side on. So flip it around. 
do the exact same thing on this side. Put our adhesive on. While I'm doing this, I want to tell you guys thank you for thinking about Joseph. He did not get better. We went to the doctor today. and uh, Well, actually, we went on Thursday. This is Friday when you're seeing this video. So we went the next day. And they said that his um, flu test came back negative. His strep test came back negative. But the doctor felt like it was one of those two. Because today he was running a fever. He didn't want run one yesterday. But today, which is Thursday, not Friday when you're watching this, he was running a little fever. So went back to the doctor, got him some meds. He's been asleep most of the day. Vince got home, and so I came down to the craft room. So here we go. He's going to do fine, though. He's, he's feeling better already because he's got some antibiotics in him. But thank you all for thinking about him. That was super sweet. Okay, I think we're ready to get our string. We'll flip this. All right, I'm going to show you what I did, but I'm going to show you how I'm going to fix it, too. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention, and I let these overlap, and I should have moved them up from each other, and I didn't. But I think I can fix it, and it won't be too big of a deal. I'm just going to cut right through the center here. And you may not want to do this, so if you, when you do this, move these like they should be, and then you won't have this problem. But I don't want to have to redo that and tear that off. And I don't want to waste those brads. So when you make a mistake, you just find a way to fix it. And I'm going to put this little slice where those cross over. And then I'm just going to make a straight line all the way across. Just like that. And then the same thing on this side. And let's see what we get now when we close them down. That's better. And I don't hate the way that comes together. Um, but, you know, if you pay attention and do it right the first time, you won't have that problem. But there's a mistake in how to fix it. And now, if you remember this sparkly twine that I have, I love this stuff. I'm going to come up here to the top, to the top brad, and I'm going to I'm get this white paper off first. <laughs> I'll come up here to the top brad, and I'm going to tie this on the top one. So I'm going to wrap it around a couple times and then tie it just in a square knot. One more time. And then I'm going to trim this piece, the loose little short piece, away. Now that feels pretty snug. If you're not sure that's going to be snug for you, just go ahead and put a little glue under there just to secure it in place. So now we're going to close it up. We're going to close the insides in, the bottoms up, tops down. Okay, This bottom will go that way, but we're not there yet. So we're going to flip this side in and then flip this side in. It's looking pretty, isn't it? And then we're going to bring this piece over this piece over and now we're just going to figure eight this twine and I left myself way more than I need so we're going to cut a piece off and I just love how that looks I even like the mistake I mean it works you still you still get the the point across and it works really cute so let's undo it so if we wrap this around and I wrapped it a lot <laughs> and then you get to go inside and see your explosion mini album I love it. I hope you guys like this. It was super fun to do. And let me bring the other one back over too. Here's the other one that we made. And this one's just much, much bigger, remember? And it just ties with the ribbon. And then there's this little guy, which I really like these colors of this one so much better. So much better. So let's close it up again. And wrap it up. And it can go either way. Remember, last time I went the other way, this, this time you can go this way. It doesn't matter which way you go. And there you go. I hope you guys like that. Let me know what you think. Here's one for you. Leave in the comments for me. What was the last crafting mistake you made and how did you fix it so that nobody saw it? That would be an interesting topic for us to read. So in the comments below do that. I may even put that on my Facebook page. So if you follow me, watch for that. On Friday I may put that out there to see what you guys are, um, what you guys are doing to fix things. Alright guys, thanks so much for watching. This was our last envelope punch board um, video uh, where Gareth and I are collabing. I hope you guys enjoyed this little series and we will bring another one to you soon. If you have any suggestions for collabs we can do, leave them in the comments below. We always like um, ideas that you want to see. Thanks so much for watching guys. I'll see you tomorrow for Hide His Word in My Heart Scripture Art Journaling. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.